and welcome to the He Doesn't Want a Podcast, sponsored by Learners Ross Driving School and Drumbo Park Racecourse. Today, I'm here with Simon and Martin Ramsey. I don't know if I put that in order or not, or if you prefer it that way, or it's <laughs> Martin and Simon. But uh, for the people watching on YouTube, lads, do you want to announce yourselves? Because you still like quite similar of us. Do you say so yeah. myself? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll go first, obviously. Um, um, I'm Martin Ramsey. I know I look a bit like the person that I said here, but um, yeah, I've been playing for Aquinas for, um, I really don't know how long, since I was five years old, so it must be nearly, I won't give away my age, so over 20 years, um, and I play up front, so I think Simon will take it from there. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I'm uh, Simon Ramsey, I'm a centre midfielder, I've been playing for Aquinas since the same as Martin, we both got sent together at the same age, surprisingly, but um so coming on about 24 years now. So a few spells went to Union Liverpool and stuff like that, but always just came back to Aquinas, especially when we started the senior team. So happy days. Cheers, mate. So this is the one club special, concentrating players who have played for one senior club. Um, and I thought it would be a good idea. I couldn't get one of his on without getting both of his on. And I know you two guys have been there at Aquinas from the very start of the senior team. So that's what was a good idea to get his on because – it's still a young club in terms of senior football, although it's had youth teams for, for years. Um, you, last year you played 1B. Uh, was it 1B or 1A you were in last year? 1B, one, one one yeah. Uh, last year you just finished the season. You just were a chance of promotion before the season finished. Uh, how do you think last year went for you? That's... I think, well, personally, it was, it was going really well. We, were, we had a bit of a bad spell sort of over Christmas. Um, but I think if the league had continued... We definitely would have had a big, big chance of promotion, and if not going on to win the league. Like I've heard uh, sort of other people on the podcast, I know like Marcus Kimlin was talking about uh, uh, his team and saying that they could maybe go and win it, and they were definitely the big competition, but we still sort of had to play them at home and uh, play another. We had more sort of favourable fixtures, so I think definitely we would have been right up there. So it was disappointing, but it was, it was disappointing for all. Now we, we have, well, we have four teams now, but last year we had um, three teams, and our thirds were going for a treble. And our seconds were in the cup semi final, and they were going for promotion or winning the league in their league. So it was really disappointing that everything happened when it did. But I suppose everyone has to deal with that, and we'll get on with it next year. And hopefully, with all four teams uh, going for promotion and winning trophies. Yeah. In terms of like last season as well, you said 18th in Nabi is a Bally Walter. Yeah, we were in competition. Um, it was your first year in 1B, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, first year in 1B. And um, we went, we came up to 1C, and we. We um, won one C, um, so we came up with Bangor Amateur yeah. in the one B. So that was our first year in one B. So we're we're doing really well, and um, it was it felt like a bit of a step up, but it was just similar to one C the way sort of things go. As you probably know yourself, like two A is a really difficult league to get out of, and then when you're in the one C, there's sort of teams there that have been hanging about a while and uh, sort of losing numbers and boys going on to different teams and stuff. And so we did really well to go into that and end up winning the league. And then um, this year, we were nearly going for the same again. But So since we started the senior team, it's been, I think it's been going, it's sort of, I think it's 2010 we started. So it's been 10 years. And I'm pretty sure it's nine promotions in 10 years. Yeah. So um, we were hoping for 10 and 11 there, but um, I'm sure we'll see. And if if things go away, we'll be in the 1A in a couple of seasons, or if not, whatever way the amateur league deal with it now. Yeah. In terms of like last season as well, Simon, did uh, did you notice a difference last year and step up? Have you been noticing a step up? And then now, if the season is to be finished and we go again, because you're no longer a surprise pack, he's just coming up in the league. Do you think there's going to be a target in your back? Yeah, uh, well, I'm probably not the best person to ask that because I was coming back from injury, so uh, yeah. I wasn't playing much. But most of the matches I was watching, I didn't really see a difference in standards, as Martin said as well about. 2A, 2A, I think it's just the toughest league to get out of. Yeah. And I was looking at the table, even yourselves and stuff like that. I think Willow Banker won every game, correct me if I'm wrong. I think they were yeah. 12 out of 12 or something. So I think it goes down to as if getting out of that league and then all those competitive matches every week and then into 1C. And it was obviously harder, better standard. You're playing against, playing in better ground, things like that. People with better facilities and more organized maybe, but the quality in 2A was very similar to 1C and with 1B the matches I was up at last year and I was playing one match in Lauren Tech in the Cup like the standard is a lot better I think than 2C or than 1C but yeah. 
I think, it, as you said, a target on our back. Like, I think the way it should have been sorted, we should have been in 1A, sort of hoping for mid-table or hoping for this, but we just have to go again and try and win the league, and that's the same for seconds and thirds now. So. Yeah. It's, uh, it's true, actually, like Martin said, in terms of your, like, uh, night that you were hoping for promotion, then same and said there, you would have been aiming for mid-table, 1A, just to kind of keep your shots away from relegation zone. Now you have to go back to being a winning team again and trying to win every game to get promotion and it's a change yeah. of mentality because if the league well if the amateur league was to turn tomorrow and say oh you're now actually playing next season in 1A then everything you've kind of worked working towards in pre-season has to change as well do you think? Well not for the first time I think I'm going to disagree with Sam in there I think if we went into 1A I think promotion would be our aim again yeah. I think uh, we're a good enough team of well, the best squad that we've had in years, and we've got uh, players joining us in the summer here already. Um, some really, really good players, and the competition for places is unbelievable at the minute. So I think if we were going into one A, we'd be pushing for a top four round promotion, just as we always do. Like I think if you come in, we would be coming in, as you said before, about coming in as a surprise package. I think we would be coming in as a surprise package in one A because teams don't really know what we're at. But we haven't had really many big cup runs, so we haven't really played against many of the teams around one A. Yeah. But uh, it would be good to go in any sort of friendlies we've played with teams like Rosario and stuff. It's, I think it's sort of even enough, or uh, if, if not better, and we can sort of push on. So if we went into 1A, I think we'd be aiming, and I think all our management would be aiming for as high up the league as we can. It definitely wouldn't be a relegation or mid-table for me either. Yeah. In, in terms of, like, obviously, he's disagreed there since he's dead. <laughs> so he's a different expectations. Uh, in it's terms of your cup runs... Line, he must have got prepped. <laughs> uh, Mark was saying there that uh, he had not had much success in the Cups in terms of like, he had not had big runs is that something he's want to change as well or is promotion just always been the main aim for you every year well promotion's always the main aim like the Cups are obviously important as well and it was good run especially with the thirds were in a Cup final seconds were in a Cup semi-final yeah. obviously first team did brilliant in the Irish Cup and stuff like that but League's always, always priority, and that's made very clear from everything. It's not as if we play weekend teams in the cup or anything like that, but yeah. league, the bread and butter, is always the most important. Right, okay. And, and next season, Martin said as well, Simon, you've brought in extra players, so you spent a lot of time out injured last year. Are you starting to worry about your place? Yeah, well, I was already worrying about that last year. <laughs> I was playing mainly sort of seconds last year, so... Um, Look, no, it's the more the merrier. I'm a proper yeah. club man, so if we're getting good quality players to join us, which is evident last year, obviously, and one C or last the year before, and one C and one B this year, like just the improvement in the standard just raises. Yeah. So if you're sitting watching that injured, as, as someone that loves the club without sounding too embarrassing, you're yeah. loving it. You're seeing players come in, even in your position, and raising the game basically, and we're just like not out of place at any level we're playing at, even in the Irish Cup this year, as I said. Yeah, and Martin, I'm assuming you're the club's record goal scorer, as, as are you over the 10 year period you've been there? Uh, uh, is the well, club's record goal scorer worried about his position as well? Is he? I, <laughs> well, I don't know about, I don't, well, I think senior record goal, goal scorer, I think um, Ben Leonard would probably be all time he counted goals in training and under under nine <laughs> under eight and stuff so i think he'd be a few ahead of me but um yeah no definitely i'm like we have some players that are coming through at the minute from the seconds and we had uh, boys coming back from the university and all last year last year we had tom mcguire come in who's brilliant like absolutely lightning and just a great finisher and this year yeah. joe mcgrogan joe mcgrogan who played second last year and the year before who's i think in the last two years he must have scored 80 goals i think he got 40 goals both years in the second so Joe will be right up there, and so and we've got Mark McCourt, we've got Ben, we've got like the list can go on and on. Like there's some great forward players. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm first team captain, top goal scorer. And I'm definitely worried about my place. So that shows how good we're coming on. Like, so. but you showed there is a good mixer as well. You've like some Mark, who's a lot of experience. Uh, ben, who's been a club man for years. Like I remember coming up against Ben when he was under sixteen, and he looked like he was twenty three. And when yeah. I was a Plunkett team at the time, and I used to get two guys to mark on my corners and stuff, and <laughs> just he was a big unit, like even then. And then, like, so Joey came from what Strom Mellis was that he came from, so he was, he, he was at he's Strom kind of worked his way up. Yeah, so he has. yeah. no, yeah, Joe, um, we were during lockdown, me and Joe were actually, we were doing a bit of sort of one to one sessions with uh, boy Darren Donnelly, who's a coach, he's yeah. a coach at Newhill, and uh, we were doing sort of stuff with that, and even doing that with him. 
Um, I was just really impressed with the improvement the last few years. So credit to all our coaches and credit to Joe himself for yeah. working as hard as he can. He's, he's only he's still only really young. So um, yeah, I'm really really hopeful for him this year and the next few years. Big yeah. time. So when what we'll do now? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go back to the very start. So you boys uh, started your youth career at Aquinas. I said when you were what five six years of age. So. Um, what, were, what was your youth teams like when you were younger? Were you successful or were you also rants? Um, well, yeah, I'll let you go ahead, Tim, first. <laughs> uh, right. Um, well, we were always sort of in the early, man. We were always came in, coming like third, fourth. It was sort of our, ourselves and Rosario sort of battling out. So that's where that rivalry came from and stuff like that. But underage, like proper underage, Glen Torn were in our league and St Andrews and stuff like that. And like Glen Torn, especially, you were playing one Glentorn team one week and then the next week they had all the best players in the league so it was like a league select but we yeah. never we, we, we always held us held ourselves in good stead with all those teams we never were embarrassed or anything like that we were always there thereabouts and a few good cup runs and stuff like that but like and I think we, we didn't win I, I we definitely didn't win anything I don't know why I was going to say I don't think we won anything <laughs> we didn't win anything we worked in contention really a couple of leagues were close but Two very good players, like Paddy McCauley, who plays in the senior team. Obviously, me, myself and Martin were in the team. And yeah. then um, a few ones that have went on and played senior football. And a few ones that we've sort of lost, uh, going to Dublin, going to London, the likes, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Is that what you found your love for the club, Bob? Going up through the youth groups and then taking such trips away and stuff. And you start to really get an affiliation for a club at a young age. Yeah, Martin, yeah. We, were, we, were, we were really lucky to get away. We went... We went to like uh, we went to Blackpool, sort of under. I think it might have been under ten. So it was like a mixture. We had a few boys from the older team, so we had um, a few boys join us there. So we had a pretty good team. I think we got to the plate final. And we got beat. We ended up. I have a funny story about that actually. That we we end up we played Plunkett out there, and so we were under ten, and we beat Plunkett one nil. And I was going. Me and Sam were going to St Mary's the next year. And I knew a few of the boys uh, from Plunkett, and I was like buzzing to go into St Mary's and be like, "Sure, we beat you in the uh, in the Plunkett. We beat you in the semi final uh, plate." And one of the boys who plays for Plunkett, I won't name him here to embarrass him too much. He said to me that they were hungover. He said to me they were all drinking the night before <laughs> under ten. So I don't know, don't know what really, the fact was going I on. I played for Plunkett when I was a kid. I started yeah. drinking when I was eight. So don't yeah. worry about yeah. well, they said they, they said they were all out of some disco. So. That was mine ruined, like, um, but yeah, so we went, to, we went to Blackpool and then we went to, we ended up going to Barcelona as well, under yeah. 18, uh, I won't name any more trips because we already get enough grief for being a post club, like, so I won't say anything, <laughs> we didn't end up in Santa Fe or Port of Venus or anything, but um, oh, Blackpool well, was very lower class for yourselves, or so it was. Yeah, yeah, we had to get chauffeurs and stuff around there, a bit of security, like, but no, it was, um, was alright, it was good, we were lucky to get away to stuff like that and I think. Some of the teams now still get um, trips away, trips yeah. to like Premier League and stuff. Hugh McKillop and uh, sort of like Dennis Kelly and um, all the boys who sort of do underage stuff are brilliant with organising and the kids get everything they ask for really. So it's yeah. great, great setup. It's great to see it still happening and still going on. There's still the same faces um, knocking about coaching and giving up their time. It's the most important yeah. thing really. Yeah, it's it's a big club and in terms of your setup, it's been there for years as well. Like, and it's always been one of the successful clubs. You, you, Sam, you were saying earlier, you were, you never really got close to winning something. You were all, always sort of there, thereabouts. But th- at any point, did either of you have your head turned? Maybe you want to go to a bigger club, or maybe uh, win trophies somewhere else? Because a, a wee buddy told me that his one of his actually was away for a year, the Limfield. Am I right? No, well, the that I saw <laughs> all that tweet there that we after under sixteen. At that point, we didn't have an under eighteen team. So right. myself and Simon, we were both asked to go to Limfield, but as uh, Simon will get on to, and as, uh, when he talks about more matches, he got injured after about five minutes in the match. So they ended up taking me and a boy, another boy played for us, Chris White. So yeah. um, we, and we were playing against St Mary's, and I think it took three St Mary's boys. It so chose how many people Limfield were taking. So they took yeah. about five of us. So that we didn't have a team, or else it definitely wouldn't have went. So <laughs> I know my mate, I know my mate Jack, Jack dropped me in at there. He still says me about playing for them. But um, I didn't. I didn't play much. I must have played three games. I think they were at left wing, and then I got injured playing for the school. Came back, and there was about seven new strikers, and they were all far better than me. So I just packed it in, and that's how I ended up. We we didn't have a senior team there at the time, so 
um, I ended up playing for Queen's Grads for a bit. Right, okay. Yeah, just for, just, that must be about six months until we actually got an under-18 team again. And then, uh, and then the senior team has started. Right, okay. So it was yeah. only a small sabbatical away from a club then, so it was? Yeah, no, I, 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 there was no team for me to play <laughs> for. No team I, think it, I think it did. I, I, I would have played as a ringer. I was, offering my, I was offering my services to Ben's team, trying to get a few yeah. medals or something. But no, um, no I, I, I definitely wouldn't have left otherwise. It was actually Andrew Keenan told me it a few weeks ago, and I was like, "Oh, I make sure of my breath." So, <laughs> yeah, so he, Andy Keenan. Was, Andy, Andy, Andy Keenan's one who left. He left when there was a team. He left. <laughs> he went. To, he went to the distillery. He was looking tracksy to anyone. Like, <laughs> I definitely have to feel about that sort of. Yeah. Um, so once she's then went uh, back under eighteen, then uh, with Sam and you were saying earlier, you went away to uni for a while. Was was that just a spit period every couple of years where you were away then? Yeah, well, when I went away to uni initially, it was, what, 2010, I think, and uh, we didn't have a senior team. So yeah. the senior team sort of started while I was out there, but I came back at about Christmas in the first year to change course and played for the under-19 team, and it was uh, myself and Martin and then a lot sort of younger ones, and then there wasn't the best of teams and things yeah. like that. So we were playing a morning match and then playing a senior match in the after- afternoon for Queen's grads. And, Queen's Grads have always had like four teams, so we were always, I think Martin was fourth, I was third, stuff like that. We were never, it was always just not going to training, just turning up and playing for boys that you know and stuff like that. Yeah. Like people that are mates with my sisters and things like that, they just knew us and we played for them for a wee while. But then when I came back, I was coming back from uni um, and playing for our second at the weekend. Stevie Martin was ringing me on a Thursday night and telling me to book flights. So I was coming home. At least once a month to play in the BDFL, which was brilliant. Like so, and then when I came back, obviously the senior team was proper up and running. And we had first season back, we got back into the amateur league or got accepted into the amateur league. Sorry. Yeah. What What was that like, Martin? Playing? It? Did you play BDFL as well? Because BDFL is known as a bit of a tough league, like physically. There's there's some teams in that league, and these would have been very young. There's some teams in that league too, wouldn't take two kids. Yeah. Lads running past them, like and <laughs> a bit of kicking. It was it, it was really really tough, but if you look at the division we were in at the start and like the, all the teams that were in the PDFL, I think yeah. someone actually put it up last year. Like when or when we won one C, it was like seven seven out of the I don't know how many champions there was all came through the PDFL. So it yeah. was like in Willowbank and then um, ourselves and other teams like that. Like even like St. Luke, the likes of St. Luke's and all were sort of coming through towards the end. But yeah, as I said, like the PDFL, the first year I played. It was it was really different. Like it was, you were basically I, I was me and Ben standing on the halfway line, trying. I'm, you got called offside inside your own half, and all. it was it was mental. Some of the like I remember Paul Irvine played for us, boy, yeah. great player um, from New Lords, absolutely madman. He um he used to always say before the matches, he's like, lads, I hope you have your concrete shin guards on here because it was just they just let let everything go. But it was it was great, and we had we had a good rivalry with Ben Madigan, who have since came into the amateur league and done really well. And um, we were meant to actually play them in a friendly a couple of weeks ago. I think we're won the range soon. Um, so it'd be good to see all them lads. They're all great lads. And it was just a, it was awesome them going for the leagues, both sort of, um, or the three years that we were in the BDFL. So it was yeah. good. It was, um, and there were some really good teams and some good players. But it was, a, it was just like, we sort of welcomed the senior football for a few boys, like in our team, sort of, because yeah. you'd never played it. But um, no, it was, it was great. And um, I think our thirds were, our thirds were set to win the, I think it was the second division. Um, yeah. So they would have been, I don't know what way it works, if they would have been allowed to go into the first division or whatever it would have been. Um, but our third and fourth will be in that league again. So yeah, it's still, still going well. And it was a great place to sort of learn your trade, so you say that. Yeah, definitely. Good. It's a good breaking ground, really, Sam. And it always, it always has been, the, especially the lower divisions, BDFL. And then, like Martin was saying, there's some cracking sides that come out of it. But uh, it used to have been a very mm-hmm. young team then. And, he was a very, very young club as well in terms of senior football. So I'm sure, like, he was spent three years in the BDFL, but I'm sure it was still a surprise to get an amateur league as quickly as you did, or was the club just working from the very beginning to get the amateur league? Yeah, that, that was always the goal. I think a, a lot goes down to Paddy Turley, PT, um, showing by MCA or pitch, like he was showing a house. So he basically just shown that as if it was the best stadium in the world and got us accepted. I think the year we got accepted, we... Martin, correct me if I'm wrong, we might have finished fifth. 
bit yeah, like ten teams. Something that was in the primary. There was primary. There was good. There was like CSP. Were I think yeah, CSP. CSP. Yeah. I still. I can't CSP, believe that they're yeah. not. I can't believe they're not amateur league. I don't know what's went on there because some of the players they, they were had they were they were great. Um, and then it was like sort of Ben Madigan. Ben Madigan were a bit stronger that year than us. I think yeah. they beat us both games, and we did end up Tony Moore Swift. I think might have been rocking about then as well. There was yeah. a few few other teams that were it was, but we definitely we came fifth or sixth. I think. So we didn't actually win. We we talk about that as nearly like a promotion, but it was just because yeah. we got accepted into the amateur league. Well, uh, you can't claim that as a promotion just... technically, though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You can claim it. Yeah. What kind of? Did you find a difference going from the BDFL Premier to Two C? Because when when you look at the success of of teams and like if you if you judge it like Junior Cup, Junior Shield, the BDFL top BDFL teams would always do a lot better than Two C teams. Did you find it a wee bit easier in Two C or? Yeah, it's, it's definitely easier. Definitely. Um we we won two C in our first year. Um yeah. so it was ourselves and sort of Finnegy going for the league. Um but it was a bit of a it was, it ended up sort of a bit weird towards the end. We um we had a game, we were meant to play um I think it was Drum Bow and I think Glenn Horn were in the Irish Cup final. I think a lot of our boys were Glenn's fans. And we had we had to just get a point in the last game and they didn't show up. So it was a bit of a like you, you don't get that in the amateur league at all. Like yeah. really, like I don't, I don't think it happens at all anymore. But they they, they just didn't show up um, for the match, and we got wind. I think about forty five minutes before kick off that um, they weren't coming, and uh, we just had to sort of celebrate on our own. So I actually felt bad for the Finnegy lads that yeah. it, it sounded because they were really good and they were really pushing. And I know they've since they they're in two A now and some great lads up there like their manager Christy Stewart's a great lad, great yeah. footballer as well. Um, and like it, I felt bad for them because they didn't really get a chance. I know they were sort of slagging, being like, and it, Drumbo were writing stuff on Facebook and all stuff, sort of being like, uh, we were going to beat them and all this carry on. So it, it made it a bit, a bit hollow. But um, yeah. we made, we made up for it in other years after that. But uh, yeah, but was, and, uh, to answer your original question, it was I think it was definitely easier like two seasons. I was going to say you were more worried about the Finnicky boys. I'm sure it was very hollow for you, but like after yeah. went in the league and. Being confident enough to work and win the game anyway, and yeah. then you get you get that, and it happens. Oh, you're up, you're, 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 you're looking forward to the match all week, and then you you go to the match, and like it's one of the biggest days for the club, and then that happens. Like, but yeah. what can you do? It's better than getting beat, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, it was we played a game between ourselves, didn't we? That day yeah, up there, yeah, yeah. Oh, but and then I think we called it. I think we called it. I think we called it after twenty minutes because. Stevie Martin was ringing everyone to try and get us to the egg. He was already celebrating. He was buzzing the match was off. <laughs> I was on the street in bar. His nerves were wrecked. He was buzzing it was off, so it was good. Um, <laughs> good that way. Uh, Simon, did you find a big step up when you went to 2B then? Because 2B was quite strong then, wasn't it? Or did we use in one year in 2B, was it? Or was it two years? Two, two, two years we had in 2B. The, the first year, that we liked to, I think we needed a point to get promoted against Green Island, or not needed a point, needed to beat Green Island, and yeah. we got a draw against them, went down to 10 men, but like the difference, like 2B, we a couple of years in that, and then one year obviously in 2A, but like the difference between 2C and 2B was massive, even back then, and the difference yeah. between 2B and 2A is massive, but as Martin was saying earlier, the step up to 1C like wasn't as big as it was. So we were thinking each time we were going up the leagues, it was going to get harder and harder. But yeah. our team's just always sort of improved and just been able to gauge that step up and just sort of know exactly what we're doing. And we're obviously very well drilled with all the management teams. And that's yeah. first, seconds, and thirds as well. And soon to be fourth with Luke taking over. So future's bright, definitely. Yeah, in terms of like the first year in 2B, Martin, obviously it was... A step up, but uh, did you actually get promoted from? Correct me if I'm wrong. Did you finish third and somebody pulled out this second we, year? Did you actually it, get promoted? It wasn't. It wasn't that. It was. Um, we got wind that they were putting three teams up. Right. So we went to watch. We went to watch a game. I think it was. It might have been Bangor Bangor Rangers against Lower Shankle, and we needed Lower Shankle to beat Bangor Rangers or to, uh, beat them, and. Um, Lord Shankle got a man sent off and then this boy scored this wonder goal from the halfway line with about five minutes to go. I'm pretty sure I was closest person to him. I was ready to jump on his back celebrating. But uh, so we, we had heard we had heard from boys in the amateur league that three were definitely going up. Yeah. But uh, we were there was a load of people. This match was like the last game in two B. So 
there was a load of people up on the side there. And I remember there was like a few other managers from other clubs and they were saying, it's only two going up. I don't know why you're jumping about celebrating. But yeah. we, we had heard that it was three. So we were, we were actually quite lucky to get through. The first year in 2B, we, um, we dropped stupid points towards the end of the season after yeah. starting like a house on fire. We, we normally do that. We do start very well. And we got through a stage where we were finding it really hard to win away from home and went on, went on grass. That's what people used to say about us, that we couldn't actually win on grass. We were just like a really good football team because that's the way sort of all our managers, John, John obviously has us playing like some great football. Like, and uh, we, were, we were just, we were always known as the boys who couldn't win on grass until basically 2A. And then we went yeah. on a big run. We went on a big run, as you know yourself, yourself when we played you. We went on a run where we, I think we nearly won every away game until the last game of the season, which was yeah. the, the most Holy important one. one. The, imp- the important yeah. one. Uh, right. I didn't, I didn't actually realise that, that that was the, you'd won every away game until that point. Because I think it, 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 it would be, It'd be close to. I don't know. I don't quote yeah. me on it, but I think it was. It was definitely. We went. We'd, it would beat yourselves. I remember at DC, and then we beat. Um, well, who else? We beat. We would beat Plunkett. Plunkett. We feel like some massive results yeah. along that way, and then um, which we, we lost yourselves at home, and then we lost to Finnegy at home, and we lost some sort of silly home games. Um, we lost to Plunkett at home, and John McCormick will still bring up that a few of us boys were away on a stag do. Um, so. He still, any time we go on holiday now, he still says this. He still says, don't be, going, uh, don't be going on stags and don't be leaving that. And he's probably just right back because yeah. that, that would have won us it if we were there. But it was yeah. actually uh, one of the boys, it was a plunk of style of stags. So plunk were missing some players as well. But, um, and we ended up losing that game 2 1. But the, the end of the thing was Polly Carnet away. And we needed a point. And they beat us 2 1 yeah. up there, which is obviously like, it was such a tough place to go. And but we got our revenge, um, 1C. That's where we ended up actually winning the league. So it's good that way. But yeah, as you said about 2B, yeah, it was a sort of promotion by default uh, by going <laughs> up to third. But I think it was just, we sort of knew that, that it would happen and we got lucky eventually. But um, we've sort of shown our shown our worth now since we're an intermediate club. I think um, yeah. we pushed on and just um, made a big name for ourselves at the minute. Like, so. in, terms of, in terms of my... Um, like my personal like sort of thoughts of yourselves when you've come into EA. Uh, I went up and watched this. I think it may have been your first or second game of the season against Woodville. And we had drew away to Woodville the week before and we probably should have beat them. We had a man sent off or whatever. And just beat them 2-1, I think it was. And I was watching it going, very good say, because I'd heard coming off in 2B, it would be a strong say. It was actually the, the three teams that they come off in 2B were really strong. But you, you guys, Sam, and you used to, you took everybody in 2A by surprise because it's always been such a competitive league. And it, was, it wasn't until a Wednesday night in November you were unbeaten until then in the league. So it's worth <laughs> hey, you're going to bring that up. What's that, what's that, what's that, what's that 20, 22 minutes into the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you did mention it earlier. I just had to bring it up. But uh, no, from, my, from my point of view, at that time, we actually we had a strong say at that time. And we actually get him had a couple of stupid results early in the season so when it came to playing yourselves we only played like three league games or something so we needed to kind of play midweeks but um, it was always then a case for me as a manager going to the boys they're sitting top of the league we think we're as good as that etc go out and kind of show them And but even then like the, we did beat you that night but there was factors in that defeat as well so there was a, there was a goalkeeper error. like the referee I can't remember about the referee. Do you wrong? I think you're pretty. Uh, I can <laughs> remember. You're, ten, you're sending them a Christmas card every year since then. <laughs> I, I can't even remember what happened. Uh, no, I, I remember. I remember Macker's made a mistake uh, for one of our goals. Um, I actually remember. I never forget. Was it Paddy Lowe scored a, a wonder goal? At, at, yeah, cracker. Yeah. But it's all that. Like Macker's made a mistake in that game. But like. See the games before there was penalty saves and saves he was putting off. Yeah, no, he was like, keeping keeper, yeah. like, keeping keepin us in games. Like he, I think it was I can't remember if it was Woodfield or one away game where he pulled off a penalty. Lower, save lower and, shankle. A Bally Sillon as well. There was one we were one nil. We were one nil down to Bally Sillon. I think that might have been early on, maybe the second game or something. And he saved a penalty to stop it from going two 0 and we end up winning that game five one. Yeah. Like with a few, like a lot of sort of late goals. Um. And that really was like the catalyst sort of for us to push on. So yeah. um, I know it was mistakes there. And I know he's getting a bit of abuse on the side. I know there's a few pumped the boys up uh, watching me, so he's getting a bit of abuse. But um, 
nah, that happens. Like, uh, yeah. if you want to see me, if you want to see mistakes, you should have seen Jack McRae the year after. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm, only, I'm only weighing you up I just, I just know Jack Jack will be waiting for me to slag him on this uh-huh. so just sort of, sort of throw that in yeah but that cramp. he was actually when he's come up and beat us beat DC he's fully deserved to win that day as well like and then like I said just come up with surprise package but then it wasn't because you were new to people that he's defeated teams I, I personally thought in, in my time and I've been around 2A a long time yourselves coming up through 2A are probably the, the best organised team I've came across and that yeah. may sound slightly disrespectful to your, your abilities as individuals because you have a lot of good individuals in your team like likes yourselves but the organisations were so hard to break down and things what you could normally do as a team and we, we had two guys two flam wingers at the time who would have put most fullbacks like on their arses most games and they felt it so hard to get space in those wide areas like against yourselves and uh, yeah. and then it was a challenge for me as a coach because you're like how do, how do we actually break this kind of setup down like I know Sam and you spend a lot of time like John's a very methodical coach I know John well obviously uh, sort of being around more people as well but the work you do together as a as a group uh, is that something that you have just been building for years and it comes better and better the more you do the more you train together as a club do you feel yeah well exactly like that as you said about just being organized and just well drilled like everything the minute john came in all the stuff and training just straight away just everything changed people were learning new things people were organized better and every match we played no matter what it was, it was just always so professional like i know it sounds silly even saying this about amateur league but he made us always come at a certain time. We were there an hour and a half before kickoff. I know that annoys some boys. Like, but and then we were always told to wear our tracksuits, always look the exact same, all this stuff. So you were, people were coming up to Rathmore, looking at the size of the pitch, looking at all these boys in their tracksuits ready to go and stuff like that, especially when we first came into the amateur league. And just they were beat before the match started. And yeah. everything we did in training, it's just sort of passages of play and stuff like that. It's all for the matches and everything we do. We do these passing drills, which... I could probably do them asleep at this stage. You've done them so much, taking on the back foot and everything like that and stuff. Well, taking on the back foot, his favourite quote, he'll, he'll love me mentioning that. Like, that sort of <laughs> autobiography will be called, let's say. <laughs> but, um, no, it, John, and that just goes through even to the, all the other coaches, like it's John McCauley and Dibbles in the second, stuff like that. Like, every training mm-hmm. just so you, you arrive and everything's set up for you, ready to go. It's just so good yeah. so well organized and everything that happens in training is obviously reflecting on the pitch over the last few years yeah i, I, I just echo that like the professionalism it's like it's ridiculous like i don't think there's many amateur league clubs that are getting as good a training session as us as well like not that he just has us organized and he has a thing i don't give him praise often so this is a this is a, a unique thing but it really like the, the training we have i i doubt there'd be many teams in the amateur league that get better than us and even even when he's and it's got to the point where even when if John's not there, which is very rare, like John, it has to be something serious for John to miss a training or miss yeah. a Saturday. And it if Devils is taking it or John McCauley's taking it, or even Noel's taking it, like they've all just sort of improved as coaches just under him nearly. So it's all the same and the seconds play the same way. And then Connor Cummins who manages the thirds and Luke Kelly manages the fourth now. It's all sort of the same system and John's sort of trying to get that in the youth team and stuff. So when people are moving in between teams, which happens every week with injuries and things like that they come up if someone's doing right wing back for the seconds and comes up and does right wing back for us it's the same you're asked the same you're expected the same it's it's just um it's really really good and the difference since jones came in like we used to have i remember cracking up saying it would be the same like we used to have training on a wednesday night and united were playing in the champions league you know that's a bit of a rarity these days but they were playing in the champions league in a quarter final or whatever and there was five of us at training, and you look around, and it was like me, Simon, PT, Matt Galway, Davey Cummings, like five boys who are going to start if they don't go to training or not. But it was the boys here, the boys who are just sitting in the house watching the football and just not really caring about it. And then it comes to a Saturday, and you're not you're not going to be able to match teams like that. So it is. I we always say like it's it's nearly harder to tell your manager in work that you're um, going to be away for a weekend or a miss a training session than it is to tell John. That's exactly the way I wanted if I was a manager. Like, just you want you want people to be scared to tell you they're going away or think twice if they're picking a weekend away. Yeah. Like I know now, like I went on holiday last year and my missus would crack up with this, but she she picked she picked Sunday to Wednesday just to just to make sure I at least can get the one train on Saturday. I know 
some people will be like, that's embarrassing. <laughs> You know what I mean? I want to play on exactly Saturday. Exactly the same. Yeah. My wife knows Shane Knight. She does yeah. it exactly the yeah. same. Yeah. But, but it's, it's like you said, like there's, there's tens at the start where it was only about five years of training, but you start to bring up professionalism in and then you start to make players accountable. And then the more success you come, there, there's a couple of factors which I think can contribute to your team being successful. I think the main thing is boys committing to training sessions and committing to the club. Yeah. And if you do that... <clears throat> It kind of comes hand in hand, but if your team is successful, then you're going to get more players coming. And then the fact that you guys, I think what's been a great thing for Aquinas as a club in general is you're creating more senior teams, but there's obviously a, a connection between the senior and the youth team, which means you're getting boys coming through the youth team into the seniors. And then yeah. it, that professionalism just feeds the whole way down. And then it's one of the guys I was talking to recently said he's what had 60, 70 at training. Is that right, Simon? He's, that much players yeah there's, there's some, and that's not even like that's what I was I was saying thinking about that earlier on it's just crazy that those numbers coming up the training yeah. that's even without the thirds and fourths there's like 20 boys for each team competing for places and stuff like that and people being let down every weekend and a good players missing out in the thirds team and it'll be the yeah. same with the fourths and I'm not too sure about the over 35 I think they may struggle to get a team but we'll we'll see what happens in that sort of front <laughs> I, w- I won't be surprised if I get asked to play as a ringer for them, but <laughs> you make it away with it. You grow a bit of a beard, oh. right? <laughs> uh, and you're you're saying like the, the numbers are the numbers are scary, but then do you feel that then what comes with that then is because but this being like a podcast which mainly focuses on like intermediate and junior clubs, some clubs find it really difficult to get players to train twice a week. I know my club like something we've always found difficult is getting that mentality where you have to train twice a week, but. Do you find it easier when there is more competition, there's more players there that you know you can't miss a training yeah. session? You don't you just you just don't wanna you don't wanna miss a training because if you miss a training you won't be there on Saturday. But one of the things that I don't understand, like I'm still there's some days you are not up for it or whatever, you've had a heavy weekend and on Tuesday you're still feeling a bit rough or whatever. But I love football training and always have. And Tuesday, Thursday, that's just set in stone. They're the trainings I go to that's when I train. That's I'm not mad for the gym. I'm not mad for running and stuff like that. That's yeah. my exercise every week. So you're going Tuesday, Thursday, religiously, no matter what. And especially if a team, as you said, doing well and stuff like that, and there's competition from places. If you don't turn up to your training, it's just more excuses that my manager can give you for why you're not starting or why you're not picked for the weekend. So mm-hmm. there's no point creating those excuses. It's only brought on yourself, and it's only what two hours or an hour and a half with your mates twice a week, yeah. like so. Yeah. In terms of that, Martin, your your club, like you said, you brought in new players this year, etc. And bringing in new players, is it easy to think for them to come into a club and because they see the professional standards you set, just to buy into it straight away? Yeah, no, definitely. I think that now, like, there's, there's players coming to us that like they wouldn't have looked at us four or five years ago. Like, for example, there's um boy joined us this year. You could friend the main Simons, and uh, we went to school with him, and he played for some great clubs in Al Atkinson who came up to training yeah. and he's, um, he's going to play he's played a few games and uh, like if I said to him five or six years ago to come and join us he would have laughed in our face but uh, he's, he's here and it's great to have players like that interested and come with the acquaintance and we've had that over the last few years like um, la- last year we brought in or before um, yeah, at the start of last season we brought in uh, sort of like Matty Andrews and Dan McDonald and players like that and Big Nile McCauley who was here as well and he's he's actually left since but players who've played for like really good teams and come in and just they just fit in a bit. the most important thing I know at our level we want to win and we want to think but the most important thing is that they do fit in and they're good lads and that, you can't say a bad word about them lads like and Matty especially and, and Dan um, this year or last year like probably two of our best players in the last yeah. uh, and they come straight in and they, lo- they love it and it's great to see if boys like that coming in and boys who played sort of at a higher level or I mean, around that coming in and wanting to play for Aquinas. And it's just a credit to everyone at the club and how we've been doing. And just, it's great to see. I think um, there's even, like, the, as Simon said about the numbers for first and seconds and thirds and fourths, like, and there is boys, like, there's good friends of mine who would e- easily go to teams in our league, I think, even in ones or 1B and uh, get a game and they're getting left out of the third squad like it's it's unbelievable but um so yeah no it's great to see it's great that new great that new players are coming as long as if anyone's watching this as long as no more center forwards come i'd be happy <laughs> as larry like, it's, it's, it's that a, well please 
<laughs> it's that <laughs> atmosphere you create. If you create an atmosphere when a club, then everyone buys in. It's, it's just so much easier then. People just do things without having to be asked to do it as well because they want to do well for the team and want to do well for the club and, and they want to make sure they're playing on a Saturday as well. Uh, in terms of pre-season this year, have you, Simon, have you started like a proper pre-season? Have you just been taking over or what way has been going? No, there's been about what about nine or ten matches already. So we've been right. taking over and the training was quite late at the start. But as my history normally goes, I got injured in the first minute of the match. So I've only played one match so far, so I've missed all that again, but not too serious, only another week or so. But pre-season, we came back, obviously, with all the restrictions and stuff like that. It was hard to do anything too physical, and they've credited the coaches again, just with all the organisation and stuff like that. It was like groups of five, and it was just great to see everyone again and get everyone back involved, because I know it can be lonely over that lockdown period for certain people that their life's the club, and that even includes people that come up to watch us and coaches and players and stuff. So. Yeah. Good to get everyone back together, and I think John, rightfully so, didn't make it too hard straight away to scare anyone off and back into yeah. lockdown. So worked out yeah. well. The last uh, the last week there has been like it's been like a proper preseason. Um, we had training last night, and it was it was pretty intense. Even though the numbers were quite low, because obviously boys are away at the minute and stuff, and with the league no sign in starting, we've had a few boys actually are coming back from Spain, so they're having the quarantine and stuff. So. Yeah. We're, we're missing them for that kind of reason, so we've sort of took a break on the matches from. But we did have about eight or nine friendlies, which we're, we're doing good results in. Um, so we, we drew with Crumman Star and we've beat Newington and things like that, and they're great teams. And even just coming up against them, I know they're, I know Crumman Star, I think it might have been their first game or something, but just seeing what the level they're sort of at and how they operate, it's, it's great. Because like, if, if we play Crumman Star in a friendly, even three or four years ago, would it probably been a cricket score? So even nil nil with the same boys of half fitness is still a good sign. And um, if we keep up this training and hopefully the league gets sorted, um, I think we'll be ready and fine. Yeah, it, it's a hard thing to judge because a lot of clubs have started back. I mean, some have started back just recently, and some clubs started back earlier, and nobody really knows when we're going to start. So. It, it's hard to judge when you're going to start your pre-season. I think the hardest thing for any club is probably getting it right. So it is really yeah. because yeah. nobody, nobody, you, you won't, know, you won't, you won't know until it starts. So you got it yeah. right. Like if, <laughs> it, could start, it could start, it could start in two weeks for all we know. Like and there'd be boys, yeah. Jesus, we need to get back to training here. And then, and then oh. clubs are talking about, or people are talking within clubs about burnout, potential burnout if you do too much. Yeah. And your season has to go on longer. But once again, we're not, we're not going to have a, a clue. But it, your shells use are notorious at starting well, so probably get that yeah. bit right, and then it's just making sure you just finish the, the yeah. season strongly as well. I think another point on that is like even even if the season isn't starting, like obviously you're taking it late and stuff, but mm. all the boys in our club, the man, mental health is obviously really important, especially with young exactly. men. Like it, we we if we need to be out of the house doing something, and I know like it, it was good that we sort of organised at the start when we couldn't train together, we're doing sort of five k runs and marathons and things like that, but. Um, it's, I know, I know if, if we weren't doing that, I probably would have just sat in the house and done nothing. Yeah. And you're driving yourself mad. Um, so it is good to get everyone sort of back and together. And I know John, John was giving me great last night about talking too much and training, but I'm actually just happy to see my, see my mates again. <laughs> so it's good, it's good to get out of the house and actually talk to someone else who isn't a four-year-old or my missus. Yeah. No, I, I found that as well. Like I, we started back small groups, like groups of five and six. I think at one stage during June, you were allowed that. We started doing like AM sessions and PM sessions. And we were getting more numbers to our training sessions. Like, like we were doing like two PM sessions and one AM. And if we had a set of boys pre-season starting today, we would have had about 12 there. But we were getting <laughs> full numbers, like the, we were in the restrictions like, and all these different sessions. And we were putting on like three a day because people just wanted to get out of the house. Like you said, Martin, yeah. mental health, it's yeah. a massive thing. And, and even people who think they're completely okay, then come out of their bubble of their life and they're stuck in lockdown and then things become a lot more difficult and it's it was for us personally important to get back and it, you can see then it's the same as yourselves like and you said seeing your mates martin it's, it's sometimes just being able to spend time with your mates is is what it's all about really and that's why we play football really on saturday isn't it yeah definitely yep. yeah yeah uh that's i'm going to ask you a couple of questions about uh players you've played with in your career so um you, you can name each other if you want but uh, who's the, the best be player? Me, anyway. <laughs> who's the best player you've ever played with at Aquinas? 
Um, I'll go first here. At Aquinas, I I would probably have a toss up. It's tough because you sort of go back to the older days where boys were playing. But um, I always say that uh, you probably know from school you you know David Cummings. When yeah, DC, when we, player. yeah, when we were coming through, um, sort of like the BDFL and all that, uh, mm-hmm. like he was just he was unbelievable. He could have played anywhere, could have played for anyone, and it was just I've never seen anyone at that level sort of grab a game by the scruff of the neck. If we were getting beat. He was just—he wasn't captain or anything, but he was just such a leader, just on the pitch. Just yeah. he just bring boys with him, and it would be a toss up probably between him and Paddy Turley, um, yeah. who's our captain, who's again just another leader, like the best header of all you'll ever see. That just wins everything in both boxes. Like he's—I—I I think he told me the other night he's thirty-seven or thirty-eight now. He can still do a job even higher up than us still. Yeah. But um, and in the current team, I know I'm naming I'm naming like ten players here. But in the current team, <laughs> I'll uh, get the big sign. I think. Get, get my current, to say to Mark. <laughs> in the current the current current team, Matt Gorman and Mark Boylan and Emil Black. Even there's another. I'll throw another one in there. Yeah. But uh, they they could, uh, as I've said before, they could play for anyone. So it's great yeah. they're playing for us. Because Matt Matt, I know Matt well. He he started off very young in your senior team, and yeah. Uh, He'd be in his 20th. He's now a lot more experience. He's worked his way up from what, 2, two C, 2B two with the senior team. So, yeah. And imagine that at this stage, what extra experience, he's a lot more improved. Yeah, you can, well, there wasn't much need for improvement, to be honest. But yeah. you, could, uh, you could see just even, even now, he's turning into a leader as well, even in training and stuff, and just yeah. sort of pushing boys on. And he's maturing. And um, he's just, he's, he can play anywhere. He can play centre half, centre midfield. On either wing, you could have him anywhere in any team, and it's the same with, as I mentioned as well, our Mark Borland, who's probably most underrated player I've ever played with. Like he, he's just seven eight out of ten every week. You could yeah. play, he's just he's just a coach's dream, like so good. Yeah. that's what you were uh, mentioning about the fullbacks earlier, guy. You said about you had flan wingers. That's probably why they yeah. didn't get playing against us because <laughs> our fullbacks were just brilliant. Like Mark yeah. Borland playing there. Uh, who who would be? Would you have quite similar players then, Simon? Would you, Martin, or would yeah, you? Yeah, all, all the ones that Martin mentioned, obviously, I would begrudgingly mention him as well. He's up there, like, wouldn't be where we are without him, but I'll stop right there. So, uh, Paddy <laughs> Turley is, um, Paddy Turley was probably one of the best players I've played with, definitely. Best leaders, best people as well. It's just, was so good playing with him. He'd make you feel the same height as him, whatever he is, six foot yeah. six, every time you're playing. So, but him and, and one that Martin didn't mention, I want to throw out there, who's probably the best player I've played with at Aquinas was Matt Galway. Cause yeah, he used, to do, he used to do centre midfield with me when I came back from Liverpool and like our first sort of year in the amateur league as well. He was still playing, but mm-hmm. he was just made everything look so easy. I remember Matt probably won't mind me saying this. I remember coming to watch matches and before and being like, he's doing nothing. I um, honestly can't see what the fuss is about him. And then I played about two minutes with him was just like yep that's what the fuss is all about yeah. you were just getting the ball at your feet you were just being able to do whatever you wanted just because he was controlling everything else and just never saw him give, give the ball away never saw him do anything wrong just always just a, such a smart player like yeah it, it, your team at Aquinas working away upper leagues uh, well you both played different positions so I'll start with you Martin who's the, the hardest centre half you've played against who's the toughest opponent you've had um, well, yeah, I would, I would think like I could name the whole Willowbank back four. Like, we've only really played against them in cup matches, but yeah. I know and most centre forwards would do like you sort of know who the weakest is in a back four sort of quite early in a match. Mm-hmm. So if you're feeling a bit tired, you sort of hang off a right back who's not looking great. But uh, obviously, Flamer, who's been on the podcast before, yeah. is brilliant. But I think your boy, Kieran Manson, the other centre half. He's so he's classic, really, really good. And I think it's his brothers, the the right back. Yeah. Gaza, Manson, you call Gaza, yeah. Yeah. Um And then you'll be many right back. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the other one. Yeah. See, they're just they're class. You couldn't get you didn't get a break. It's just uh, the only time I ever scored against him, I think, was either a penalty or a free kick. Because you just yeah. can't get anything. Even like Flamer doesn't look like he's the quickest. But it's just his, how smart he is. He just takes away a step off. Um, so yeah, I I could name any of the Willowbank. Um, you could go through their whole team, and really, I think they're big centre forward. Obviously, not the centre half. Your big boy Tommy McCrory, Tommy McCrory, yeah. as well. So, yeah, it, it goes but, to show how good a coach I was. I had Tommy when he was a kid. Um, <laughs> I didn't know where to play him. He told me he was a goalkeeper one week and a centre midfielder the next week. Most of the time, he sat on the bench. 
Nice, yeah. <laughs> nice. Probably the best pivot point and centre forward in, the, oh. in the junior football. Uh, holy, 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 holy. Them, that somebody else coached them wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> but as you said, I know, I know you, you came across from obviously Cochran and Corey semi final. Uh, yeah. But the same year we we were in our semi, um, and the, there's the team which obviously winning the junior cup. It just goes to show how strong they are, and they, they will be in intermediate football soon. And with the squad they have and the back four they have there, like you mentioned, they're they're just going to keep raising up. They'll probably end up coming back yeah. up and meet you soon once. Yeah, oh, I, was hoping, I was hoping. I was hoping. I was hoping. I was seriously hoping they wouldn't, Nick. But um, yeah. <laughs> and their their youth teams are brilliant as well. Like it's yeah. just, I think a lot of teams sort of in West Belfast are showing really good sort of youth teams coming through as well. I know like Belfast had a young man and my girlfriend, her family are heavily involved in that. And um, they're, some of the stuff they have for kids is brilliant. Like, really, yeah. really good to see clubs like that sort of coming through and sort of nearly working together. They're not even like, they are obviously are rivals with each other and stuff, but working together sort of just, as I mentioned before, like mental health and stuff like that, it's just great to see that yeah. the amount of coaches. And I think Willowbank do a thing where, I don't know if they do it on purpose or not, but I think sort of their um, first team, Seen a lot of them. I think about ninety percent of them seem to coach the junior team. To coach, yeah, they do, yeah. Yeah, and I think we're we're trying to sort of bring that in. I know boys don't have time yeah. and things like that, but that's great to see. And I think if we could do that, it'd be really, really good. Yeah, agree. It's something I've seen. I've seen them do before, and it, it makes a great yeah. connection between youth teams to the senior team because my my age group growing up, when I was a kid, I never felt like you you knew you even had a senior team when you're playing junior football and. It was only been the last 10, 15 years, clubs are starting to realise that most of their best players are going to be coming through the youth setup. And if they can bring them through the same way that the clubs, the club, the senior club is going, then and you get that connection, then you're only going to get stronger and stronger as a club. It's something that the likes of ourselves fall down on. We don't have a youth team. And it's something yeah. which the likes of yourselves, being a Queen's boys, coming the whole way through the youth system and then playing senior football can only yeah. make your club stronger, really. Like if we didn't have a senior team, I think a lot of our junior boys would probably end up at yourselves or Queen's Grass and teams like yeah. that. It would just, which is good that they obviously now have a place to go. And like we have um, have young ones up training nearly every every night. We have training like last night we had James Mallon there who's yeah. it sort of came through the whole way and he's just he's looking he he the improvement he's made in the last couple of years. He's just he just looks like a senior player now. So yeah, uh, long that may that continue. Definitely, mate, definitely. Yeah. I, it's, Simon, it's, who's, easy, it's easy to create a disconnect as well with the youth and oh, I need to focus on senior because, but with our club as well, it's just sort of the focus is what we've always been a junior club. So the focus was on that. And then the senior team yeah. has arrived and it's easy to become just separate entities, but we're working very hard. And it's obviously evident, as Martin said, people like James E. Mellon are all coming through now and James Crossy even came through last year too, stuff like that. It's just great yeah. to see. The connections improving and getting there, even for such a young senior club. It's good to see as well, but when the players get the under eighteen, that they're not just thinking of going to other clubs straight away. They're thinking about going to yeah. Aquinas first of all, oh, and then Absolutely. if it doesn't work out in the Aquinas senior name, they can go somewhere else. Um, uh, yourself, Simon, uh, who would be the the best centre midfielders you've came across in your time? Well, that that Tuesday night you're on about in uh, Ralph Moore in Dece- December, I I got the run around from someone I couldn't even tell you his name, so I'll be him. Will include you'll probably know, <laughs> but um, we as Martin said about like the teams like Willowbank and I mentioned teams like Clunkett as well, where you just had yeah. great battles. But one that I'd want to mention from two A, the, the one of the best players that I played with is Chrissy Stewart. Martin mentioned earlier in the um, podcast. I remember, I, I don't, I'm not sure what age Chris is, but he's much older than me. About and 44 he, or something now, mate. So it's <laughs> oh, he is. He's different level. He gave me, yeah. I remember I was getting, like, sc- people were screaming at me in the pits, and I was just looking, being like, you try and mark him, I can't get near him. Anyone try and mark him? It's just, he was brilliant. And another one from 2A as well was the Tully Carnet Centre midfielder. I think he's Callagher, something, Jimmy Callagher's brother, maybe, yeah. from Limfield, or a, a relative anyway. And he was brilliant. Really, really good. Like so hard to get the ball off, and he was just one of them ones just in your ear the whole time. And normally I don't pay attention, but it's, if you're the match isn't going well for you, it's just tough not to. So yeah, I'd say him, him and Chrissy probably the two I've played against. Yeah, uh, Chrissy used to drive me insane because it looks so easy when you're watching and you're saying you're getting shouted at in the pits, but. He does this thing from throw-ins. He just drops off really quickly. Uh, and he always gets through three or four yards. Corners, well, going down corners. 
Why did he get the three or four yards? He's going to do every yeah. thing, but he still gets that three or four yards. And it's even in open play as well. He just does a three drop of his shoulder and drops off. No, he's a very good player, and he's, he's still doing it for Finnegan, unfortunately. So he is for us. Uh, Simon was saying about like cent- the centre midfield. I, I don't even know what position he plays. He's just well, he can play either wing. As I think well. he's on the he wing. Doesn't I think run on much the wing. either wing, but he can yeah. play it. Uh, class, really. Good. I was following him everywhere. I, I was. I was doing 10 positions like that day I was playing against him anyway, so... Yeah, he's a great lad as well, like... Yeah, so yeah, sounds like, like, Chris, he played, the, he played higher up in the amateur league as well. Did you yeah. find that yourself, same and Nick, playing against him? It, it was a good learning experience for yourself, being a young player coming up through the leagues and then coming up against somebody just that wee bit more nice against you. You start to learn a wee oh, bit right. more as a player. Absolutely. It, it's just sort of, even the, it's the talking and stuff on the pitch, I know people go on about that all the time and coaches are big advocates for that like we're so quiet today we're this and that but like we were quite quiet when we first came into the amateur league and teams yeah. were just sort of out talking us and maybe outsmarting us and in some very rare occasions obviously because of the success we've had but it definitely does come into it and especially playing like, your likes of Chrissy and that's Alec Callagher from Tully Carnet and even yeah. your boy for, for you that day it was a wee bit older than me as well and he was yeah. just sort of outsmart you and you learn straight away. Like the next match you were playing after that, and the next match after that, four four match we got beat. I think we won maybe five six in a row, stuff like yeah. that. You just go on and momentum. You just think to yourself, "That's not happening to me again today." And it wasn't real. It d- didn't really happen that much. Like going up through the leagues, especially in even though the Belfast district was obviously yeah. a great league, but going into the amateur league, you you weren't really getting the run around. So the first time you're getting that from somebody and somebody's in your ear and they're older and teaching you a lesson. Hopefully, I can do that. Be a few youngsters yeah. in the next few years, so I'll hit yeah. that level. I'm trying to think of a guy who would have been playing second and three plus that night. If I remember correctly, with Philly McFall, who left footed, beautiful teeth, her slick back uh, would have dropped back a lot, and then on his left foot. Uh, and then now Peoples just, just was playing for us at the time. He was. I know. I know now. I know now. Peoples. He, yeah. he was good. I think. I think it was your other fact because I yeah. Yeah, left footer. Just give me the run around. That yeah. Day. yeah. And he's playing for over thirty fives now, Philly, because he, he actually had to stop playing for us because he, he lives in Down Patrick. So it's been about two months to get back and forth for training. He's playing over thirty fives, and I watched him on Sunday and was going to him. I just make training him even one day a week just to come down because <laughs> he could still do it, so he can, and then yeah. he he's still has. Matter. He's still fit and he's still got a good left peg as well. Um, you're, you've had a lot of good teams at Aquinas. Um, I'll start with you, Martin. What's been your best and worst moments at the club? Well, the best would be um, when I'm on C um, on the last, the, well, it wasn't the last, it was the second half game of the season where we went um, to Tully Cornet and it was the same sort of scenario again. It was like deja vu. Um, and we went up, we were sort of competing for 1C with Banger Amateurs. And I think. I'm not sad. I was getting in the car and going to all Banger Amateur games during the week and stuff and um, hoping for them to drop points and they just kept on winning. They had a really good yeah. centre forward and a few few, a few good players. I think of I think of lost. I was speaking to their manager this year when we played them. I think they've lost a few um, players, but yeah. they seem like the um, some of the Banger clubs sort of they seem to sort of change players quite a lot. But um, they were going really well. So uh, when we went up there and we ended up um, winning um, – Two two one. It was named. We were two 0 up. Um, I scored a penalty, but it was absolutely. I I don't like hitting penalties anyway. I know boys in our team. Uh, we Daryl Halloran plays for a second. Says ninety percent of my goals are penalties. But um, I I've never been more nervous hitting a penalty in my life. I think I pretty much. I, think, I was speaking to Noel recently, and I think he said he said it without him saying. Noel McKee said to me that I, I think I scuffed it a wee bit, but the keeper went the wrong way anyway. So no, it was good to get get over the line and um. Finally, big PT, and it's one of his last games. Made an absolute howler at the end to make it interesting, as you as you normally do um, for Aquinas. Like we never do anything easy, but um, no, it was that was probably the best. And the worst would be on the exact same pitch, just in two A, just when we needed a point. And yeah. I, I I don't think we've ever played in front of more people. Like it was just everyone sort of in we Moat Park, just round yeah. up pitch, and um, no, that was dev- that was devastating. They end up needing a point and. After such a good run, and uh, as I said, mentioned earlier about all the away um, wins and all the wins in a row and the momentum we had, like we were very confident that we were going to at least get a point there. But fair play to Polly Cornet, they were good, and yeah. uh, the league doesn't lie at the end, so they ended up winning it. But um, we got our revenge the year after. You're very experienced, say, I think once by the time you yeah. got to 1C, a couple of our players were their whole aim was to even get into 1C. And then uh, yeah. the, they, we were talking earlier about Nouse and 
boys just knowing they went around a football pitch. I found out with Tully Carnet, they were they were very smart okay. football teams, so they were and just very hard to break down at times as well. Uh, same in yourself, best and worst moments would be similar, or is there any difference? The the worst ones definitely similar, but I just add to that that uh, I did uh, Martin Martin forgot to mention it because it's all about himself. But uh, I did <laughs> um I did my cruciate in the first five or five ten minutes of that match and right. thought it was Superman and tried to play on and was out for about a year and a bit. So yeah. I played on in that match and then woke up the next day and was just obviously raging about the result and everything like that and then just couldn't get out of bed. I had the phone in sick to work, like couldn't move my knee. So that was obviously the worst moment and then missing that following season when we won the league and everything. It was just, that was tough to take. But Very similar. Apart from that, there hasn't been a person, but obviously my chocolate knees are probably the worst thing. So it's not, nothing to do with the actual club itself. But um, best one would be that promotion from 2A, like, because yeah. as we would mentioned throughout, this all goes away. When there's, ones, there's one we, we beat Woodville, 1-0 away. And... There was a lot, as Martin said, like the Tully Connor match, there was loads of people all watching, but there was loads of people all watching that day, and it just felt like proper heated match. And they scored an own goal, and we just, there was no football played. It was just a yeah. kicking match, basically. And it was the first time I, I probably walked off the pitch and mean, like, we just were, a team tried to bully us, and we just didn't let them, and we just it's walked joking, all yeah. over them, and just were able to do that. And it just showed that where we, how far we came, and that was just great. I've never been happier leaving a football pitch, I think. So, Probably that promotion and then especially that Woodfield match I would go for. Yeah, do you play the whole game with a ton of cruciate? I've torn my cruciate and I lay about the ground crying. <laughs> that's right. That's, 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 that's blue and black there. So it's, you, think he'd uh, ease off, yeah. you think he'd ease off the tackles? He was looking for the number who he, he was anywhere near him. No one even touched him. <laughs> for the he was looking around to see who did it there. Jesus. Man, that's himself. That's <laughs> they, they were all screaming in my face to try and get me back on the pitch. So I, I, it's not my fault completely. I just... <laughs> fair play, fair play. Uh, lads, I'm going to move on to the uh, questions on Twitter. Um, there's a few ones I think are made hijacked it a wee bit. I don't even yeah. know if some of these, some of them sound like they're completely innocent, but they could be completely bad. I don't, I don't know if I'm even able <laughs> to talk about them or not. Uh, well, I got, I got a good red question. On, be bad. <laughs> I got a good question on Facebook by uh, Owen Taggart. He asked, uh, Will Aquinas? ever see a twin brother management duo? <laughs> I'll answer that. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I could stick, but as much as I love him, he's my brother, but I just couldn't stick managing that. I didn't play him <laughs> with him for so long, but I don't know if I could do that. If R. Kelly and his, his son was maybe playing, maybe I'd think about yeah. it, but apart from that, Pello one, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. No, who, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But um, I think John, John will probably be there. John will probably never saw. So yeah. I said, yeah, him and him and Steve, Stevie Martin will probably take over after another man. I was yeah. all. But, um, <laughs> Martin, yeah. I, I would I would take the management team if Stevie Martin could be. We could make it a trio like us two and Stevie Martin. That would be it. Yeah, yeah maybe he's gonna start. He's gonna start Stevie, with another ten. Uh, Stevie used to say it was a funny story about Stevie. Simon was maybe even playing this when we first started, like the seconds. Um, those boys came back and it's just you were getting anyone to play for the seconds. So yeah. Didn't really know, like Stevie's a legend at our club, so like if you were ever about, you know who he is. But I remember boys who were mates with us sort of coming and helping us out and playing. And I was like, Who's that out in foul that handed me a beetroot jar filled with water for water at half time? <laughs> you know, to hand out the beetroot jar, like, Jesus, absolutely brilliant. But um, <laughs> nah, yeah, so he'll probably be he'll have a say one day, like managing the team. <laughs> so you two and Stevie, that's the team, the yeah, trio. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, on uh, Twitter, a guy called Luke Kelly asked about Dead Dead Man's Alley. What's this about Dead Man's Alley? Don't Is this safe I'll, to talk I'll about? It? Slightly safe. I won't mention all the details, but yeah. um, so it's a, just a basically an alleyway behind the bot and like sort of said that Chinese on the um, my own road. So uh, we go there for like after Christmas parties and after like end of season awards and stuff and especially the Christmas one. The Christmas one, you have to, if you're a new player, you have to do a speech or sing a song. And I don't know what people are thinking. I'm so glad I've played for so long, but the majority pick sing a song or do a speech or something like that. So the best one that I've seen in my life, I think that's the question I read earlier, but it was um, Shane McKenna did the Any Given Sunday speech, and it was the best thing. I got goosebumps. It's the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Is this just all your, club, all your club, just in a alleyway? 
Yeah. 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 There's boys, there's boys who've done raps and then they just never came back. Like they were that yeah. embarrassed. There's boys who came, new players and did a rap and then probably woke up the next day and went, geez, I'm never coming back here. Like, <laughs> but uh, it was just all speeches and initiation sort of thing. So it's yeah. it, good crack. It's, um, See, it's we, might have to, we might have to expand now with four teams and over 35. So we might need a bigger alleyway, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> just squeeze everybody in, you'll be right. Uh, yeah. David Fitzpatrick asked about Spring Hill Court. court. <laughs> I didn't put the whole question down, so I'm not actually sure what the whole question was. Uh, I think it was based at you, was it, Simon? Yeah, it was. We we went to um, Kilkenny last year on an end of season trip, and it was brilliant. Went just for a weekend, and um, we arrived up at the hotel, and I booked it. on I booked one with a swimming pool because I just always book one with swimming pools. I just love swimming, like so. I just filtered <laughs> it with that, and I, I didn't notice I did it, and I was like booked it, and was like, here we go, and. We arrived in the bus and I'd been drinking all day and I looked out the window and the first thing I seen was like a family pushing a pram and I was like, what have I done here? And then we uh, rocked in and quickly had a drink in the bar and then went into town and I was dreading like everyone coming back and we came back and it was just like a full on nightclub basically, the hotel at night, <laughs> it, was, it was insane. There was an outdoor bar and everything and people just all stag dudes basically, just all sitting there. So right. brilliant crack. But uh, we're hoping that we were going to pick that obviously every year, but if they yeah. take us back, so we're waiting to see what we can do next year with obviously everything going on. It wasn't yeah. the right time to book it again, but I yeah. was actually, I probably shouldn't podcast with football, should be talking about my personal life. But I was meant to go to the county this weekend, we went to stay in Lanigan's hostel, and yeah. uh, we had to cancel it all, but it worked out perfectly for me because we have a game this weekend, I'm not getting to miss it now, so. <laughs> enough yeah, so fr- friendly over a stag do that commitment uh, to the cause exactly <laughs> that's the way to do it uh, right ja- in <laughs> exactly uh, Jack McRae asked uh, it's your mate getting on back he said uh, Martin did you Dave in the Collingwood final versus Galway I've seen that I was laughing it was, it was actually it was like a I think that was the quarter final uh, we went down I was doing a Masters at Queen's so I think it was the oldest player in Collingwood history but I went down, R- Rory Taylor, Rory Taylor, you know, you're yeah, mixed with, he's, well. he's a manager, and um, went down to Collingwood, and we were playing Galway, and I was getting a load of texts from my mates, it was on Battery 65, so we getting yeah. a load of texts from my mates, Galway were, I think Galway might have been like, they were big favourites, we were like 11 to 2 or something, we had a good team, so yeah. like a few boys, we all had money on us, but um, a boy, um, one of my good mates, Matt Murdoch, I think he had a good load of money on, I won't say how much, I won't embarrass him on this, but he had a good load of money on Galway. Right. And uh, we were drawing nil-nil, they were battering us, like we couldn't get out of our half. We are drawing nil-nil, and we had uh, Matty Hughes, who plays for Queens uh, at the minute, and he's class, really, really good player. And he, I think it was him, just whipped one across goal. And I was nowhere near, but there was a foul right in my back. And I don't know, I'm not going to say a dive, but I, I fell over. And if anyone's played in the Collingwood before, I know Emo Black, who plays for us, said that like the ref hand out cards for nothing. Like yeah. it's, it's really, really weird. And he just so quickly whipped out a red card for their centre half. We had a penalty and we went 1 0 up and we just hung on. They got another man sent off about 10 minutes later for slabbering, so we just hung on. But uh, yeah. so to answer Jack, Jack's question, I went down a bit easy, but I don't know about seven. <laughs> but it was good. It was good. I loved, I loved beating Matt Murdoch's bat. That was the best yeah. bit about it, to be honest. <laughs> That's 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 everything. Uh, thank you very much for doing this for me tonight. Um, something different. Uh, getting fellas in here one club, and then like I said, I couldn't get one of them with the other, and I thought it'd be a good idea. Something different to get twins in the first twins podcast. Uh, but struggle with is, another set of twins guy. He'll be struggling. I know, mate. Single family. Right? Is, is it like the Navels, Susar? The Navels in amateur league. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> or their brothers are not twins. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, but thank you very much for doing this for me and I, I wish you all success and as I know John McCormick very well I went to school and Ralph Moore and uh, you're all good lads at Aquinas and uh, when you come up through 2A I, I said at the time that you would keep going further and further in my opinion and I really do wish you all the best I hope you get to your primary division and continue to be successful as a club and uh, yourselves individually as well I hope you go on you're still young enough to have longer careers as well so, yeah. well, your knees aren't that young soon, <laughs> but apart from that, these are all right, these are. Uh, but uh, thanks very much again, lads, for doing it. Cheers, Gary. That was Cheers, brilliant. Enjoyed that. Uh, the podcast is sponsored by Learners Australian School and Jumbo Park Racecourse. We'll be back with another episode next week. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs>